I didn't know if you wanted to be just friends or what. Well, after Saturday, we'll know more about what we want. All right, where's the party at? It's at a friend's house. I don't know. I really don't go to parties. You do want to be with me, don't you? Yeah. Then come. Okay. So, what's the story with his cramps character who's the talk of the campus? Oh, no, don't tell me this has gone beyond my classroom. Okay, I won't tell you, but it has. Wonderful. Luckily, I've got a little talk scheduled with Gramps. This guy must be a real moron. Or perhaps crazy. Oh, far from it. Well, are you going to kick him out of class or at least threaten to? It's crossed my mind, but I hate to duck out in such a challenge. It's been a while since I've had such a worthy adversary. And what constitutes the qualifications for worthy? Bold, intelligent, Handsome? I guess some women might find him attractive. Do you? You're getting personal, Vaughn. Well, you know I'm jealous. Oh, I'm so sorry that the mutual attraction's not on my end. And, and besides, I just think your wife might object. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but what you might do to gain a victory over this adversary is use some of your feminine charms to give him a real biology lesson, if you catch my drift. Vaughn! Just saying. So, are you this much trouble in all your classes, or are you just targeting me? <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity troublemaker, but, you know, most classes don't teach something as debatable as evolution. All educated people accept evolution. All educated people accept that organisms evolve slightly to adapt to their environment, but not all scientists and scholars accept that you and I descended from some ape-like creatures which descended from some lower life forms, which all descended from some one-cell organisms. Well, those people are in a definite minority. True. And you and your peers are trying your best to make sure it remains that way, using suppression of freedom of thought. Hey, I let you argue your points in class. That is not suppression. All right, I'll grant you that, but were you actively encouraging people to question the contents of the textbook, or are you just like a cat playing with a mouse, you know, just amusing yourself? Well, you don't seem like the mousy type. <laughs> Cute. You know, back in my day, education was all about memorization and regurgitation. You stuffed your head with a bunch of knowledge, took the test, and promptly forgot most of it. And then you just got ready for the next test. Well, that's still basically true. Yeah, but there's one big difference in the teaching of evolution. And what's that? <laughs> Students can forget every single detail that's scientific in nature, but they remember one key point, that life is nothing but a bunch of cells having chemical reactions. And when those reactions cease, there's nothing left but dust in the wind. And what's your point? <laughs> You're a bright gal. I'm pretty sure you get my point. You think you're pretty special, don't you? What? Come on, just... It, you think that you're better than most people because of your superior intelligence and your physical beauty, maybe? What, what, so you're accusing me of having an ego problem? No, no, no. Maybe I'm accusing you of being human. But, come on, just admit it. You feel special. Okay, so if I'm going to be completely honest, I, I, I guess they have some vestiges of a superiority complex. So what makes... Your chemical reactions, your thoughts, your dust. <laughs> Any more special than the janitor or the garbage man? Or how about that possum lying in the ditch that tried unsuccessfully to find out why the chicken crossed the road? You know, my intelligence is not derived from an opinion. I think I've successfully proven my brain capacity with qualified testing. I'm a member of Mensa. You know, many creationists are also members of Mensa, but you consider them to be morons because they won't accept the gospel of Charles Darwin. Oh, come on. You're, you really, you're going to be accusing scientists of participating in religion? More like anti-religion, but you know, there is an element of faith involved, and they use similar proselytizing techniques as they spread their gospel of death. 
No, here I was working under the assumption that you were a man of intelligence. You know, I also qualify to be a member of Mensa, but I don't put much stock in that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In the end, godly wisdom is much more important than human knowledge and intelligence. Alfred Lord Tennyson said, Knowledge comes, but wisdom lingers, and if I might add, it lingers eternally. You just never take a rest from this campaign trail, do you? Well, it's not my campaign, okay? Would you do me a favor? It depends what it is. Some clear night, I want you to gaze up into the stars and just consider how immense the universe is and how small our Earth is within it. And then consider how small you are in relationship to the Earth. And as you ponder your insignificance in the vast scheme of things, just imagine being the daughter of the author of all of that majesty. Let's try it. I have gazed at stars before. But you didn't ponder the right questions at the time. C.S. Lewis said that miracles are simply the retelling of the same story in small letters that are written in letters too large for some people to see across the whole world. While you're gazing at those stars, imagine dying, which you will one day, and finding yourself in the courtroom of God. Who's going to be considered the morons when the judgment day arrives? Yeah, these are fairy tales. Look, we'll see in the end who's right. I'm sorry to pop your bubble here, but if you're right and there is no God, you'll never know it. You'll never get that chance to yell, Yippee! I win! There is no eternal life. Because you'll just be dust. On the other hand, if I'm right, you're going to know full well. And you're going to know that you blew it. Big time. Now i got to get going. Somebody's piled a whole bunch of homework on me, and I can't afford to get behind. Well, wait. Before you go, I'm... How about I treat you to dinner sometime? What? You're trying to bribe me so I'll behave in your class? <laughs> oh, contraire, Pierre. I am... Um... Yeah, I think I'd like to continue this conversation. Really? Mm-hmm. Where would we eat? My house? Yeah, I think I'd like to make something special. Your house? Okay. When? About uh, Friday, November 20th. Would that work for you? I'll make it work. Are you sure you don't want one? I can't stand the taste of beer. We'll get you something that goes down more smoothly then. One of my friends brings bourbon and lemonade. Really? Yeah. I don't know. My family's always avoided alcohol. Loosen up, handsome. Have some fun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do we have here? What are you doing here, Hanson? Trying to recruit for your intramural team? You know I don't like the fact that you took two of my players from me. Well, they say all's fair in love and war. Four is what you want? I can give that to you. And as far as love goes, why don't we go somewhere private and talk about our past? I'm with Brad now. Are you serious? Yeah. I thought you wanted a man. This guy doesn't even drink. Of course I do. Come on, Stephanie. Let's go check out that bourbon. I've got a real man. You better not be mixing that bourbon with lemonade or something like that, wimp. I don't need you, Steph. There are plenty of hot girls at this party. Brad? Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. What are you doing out so late? I was talking. 
with Stephanie. Brad, are you sure that's all you were doing? Pretty much. I know I'm not your dad, but if your dad was like my dad, you never got that little talk about the birds and the bees. I hope you don't mind me poking my we nose. We were messing you. around. Well, that's good, but I still feel I need to warn you about Stephanie. You know, a pretty woman can entice a man into trouble that oxen couldn't drag him into? With the sexual revolution in full bloom, Stephanie probably believes that premarital sex is just fine. I just want to make sure that you avoid making a great Ty, mistake. There's no need to preach to the choir here, okay? I've always had the goal of getting into my marriage as a virgin. I'm thrilled. But don't walk too close to the edge of the road. The sexual urge is the most powerful thing that humans experience. You know, the best laid intentions of mice and men have off gone astray. They've been dashed into millions of pieces by letting temptation get one little foot in the door. Gotcha. Well, um, I'd better get some sleep. Gotta get up for church in a few hours. Yeah, I know. We'll just continue this talk later, okay? And when we do, I want to mention that uh, smell of alcohol that is filling the room right now. Good night. Good night. Mind if I sit here? That'd be great. <laughs> so, why are you sitting all alone? Um, most of the kids, they just want to talk about parties and junk. I have no desire to hang with them. I understand. How's, uh, how's school going? Some days, I wonder what I'm doing here. Yeah, I've been there. How's Ty? <sighs> Upset with me. Why? I let him down. I was out late at a party last night and um, didn't mean to drink, but ended up getting persuaded to do it and had a little too much. I know. Um, Stephanie's my roommate. She was bragging about how she got you to let your hair down. It made me sick. Ty warned me that a pretty girl can get a guy in a bunch of trouble. But sometimes I feel like I'm a moth and Stephanie's a candle. And I just can't help flying into the flames. The Bible says that if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Are you saying Stephanie's the devil? No. I'm just saying that he might be using her to get to you. Wait, are you leaving? Um, did I say something wrong? The first intramural event of the years today. I gotta get everything done so I can go see Ty play in the chess tournament. Aren't you that anti-science guy? I'm not anti-science. I am anti-BS. Anti-BS. So you mean to tell me you think science is BS? No. Not if it's practiced in the way it's intended, using a strict application of the scientific method. But much of what passes for science today is misinformation, propaganda, and downright lies. Really? Evolution in particular? Anything else? For example, uh, fluoridation of the drinking water. So you mean to tell me that you want our kids to have cavities? Of course not. Well, scientific studies prove that fluoride prevents the decay of teeth. Well, some have and some haven't. Have you ever stopped to think that there might be bias involved in scientific research, giving new meaning to the term political science? Listen, man, you sound paranoid. Facts are facts. Are they? Well, what if the company that's selling the sodium fluoride bribes some official? They've been using this stuff for decades. It hasn't hurt anybody. We have a cancer epidemic going on, a myriad of illnesses that the doctors can't explain, like fibromyalgia. There is a source to that stuff. Could it possibly be that sodium fluoride is a culprit? No, I don't think so. <sighs> Let's look at it this way. If there's even a chance that this stuff is causing people to get sick or worse, would that justify putting it in the drinking water to prevent a few cavities? Of course not. <sighs> they don't put 
vitamins in the drinking water. Yeah, yeah, hold on. They put vitamins in drinks that you can buy. Exactly. Why didn't they do that with the sodium fluoride, especially the sugary drinks that cause the cavities in the first place? They put it in your toothpaste. Not mine, they don't. See, that's the beauty of going down to the store and buying something. I could choose which has fluoride and what doesn't. When the government supplies the drinking water, I don't have a choice, and they're basically forcing me to ingest poison. You started this conversation to get my mind off the game. No, you started it. Well, can we not continue it afterwards? You're killing my concentration. I noticed. Checkmate. Did you know that our supply of sodium fluoride is now being provided by China? God. That bastion of security and safety and health practices? Hey, doesn't that make you feel all warm and cuddly? You sure schooled him. In chess or in the application of science in the real world? Both. You know, if I wasn't convinced that God was in control, I'd have trouble sleeping at night wondering what mega company is going to poison me with their products because somewhere along the line, they bribed somebody whose job it was to protect me and the rest of humanity. Check. I've got you cornered. Why don't you just concede? Well, oh, if you can tell me how I can concede and win, I'll be glad to. That's ridiculous. Right, I can't win if I quit. You know, I never give up without a fight. I make it a point to never quit. Okay, it's just a matter of time. We'll see. Check. Check. Checkmate. Ah, uh, not so fast. The king has one more move. Oh yeah, you're right. After this move though, you're dead in the water. Next move is checkmate. Hmm, can't block you, can I? But I can do this. Checkmate. What? No way. I was so focused on my offense, I lost track of what you were doing. It happens. Good game. Hail to the intramural chess champion. You're a noble adversary. Hey, by the way, I'm in your bio class. Thanks for standing up for those of us that are afraid. You've got to be kidding me. Are those the standings? Yeah. And thanks to those wimp sports like ping pong and chess, y'all are in first place. But we're catching up with football. Cross country races tomorrow. We'll rack up some points there. Yeah, who do y'all have? Ty and I. You mean Gramps? Are they gonna let him ride a bike because of his old age? Ha, <laughs> cross country's a wimp sport anyways. Seriously? When's the last time you ran two miles? Never have and never will. Just the lack of physical contact doesn't qualify cross country as a sport for pansies. Pain is inflicted in more ways than one. <laughs> yeah, whatever. We're gonna have a killer basketball, golf, and tennis team anyways. Ty plays tennis. Oh, I can't wait to kick his... Tennis is a non-contact sport. Wouldn't that make you wimp for playing it? Shouldn't you be playing stickball in the middle of heavy traffic? Oh, that's mature. What do you know about maturity? Why don't oh, you just call... Okay. Yeah, control bird. What are you doing? I'm trying to salvage what little dignity you have left. Now look. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but... You're really cute when you're mad. <laughs> Please don't get mad at me like that, though. It's, it's much cuter when Jason's on the receiving end. Then why didn't you let him receive some more? Yeah. Blessed is the peacemaker for... That, that. <laughs> on your marks, get set, go! <laughs> They're leaving him in the rearview mirror. He's in last place. I wonder if the doctors warned him about eating dust. It's a two-mile race. It just started. Some of those guys are going out way too fast. And what's your name, cutie? Forget about it, Jay. She's a good girl and she's smart too. Save yourself some embarrassment. Well, besides, she's got her eye on your boyfriend. Yeah! First and second, go Dean! Brad's got kicked! So it's time, come on guys! 11.52, 11.53, 11.54, 11.55.
How could my guys lose to a senior citizen? Probably because they don't train, and they fill their bodies with substances that slow them down. You may be cute, but you are irritating. One out of two for you, and cute not being the one. <laughs> Way to go, Brad. <laughs> no, that's right, honey. I think it's time to celebrate. Strawberry shakes are all my treat. Count me in, cool pie. Let's go. Why'd you turn down a shake? I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty too, but not for milkshake. The party's tomorrow night, and I kind of want to warm up for it tonight. Stephanie, I can't go out drinking again. Not after that talk I had with Ty. Come on. You're not going to let that old man run your life, are you? No. But I do value his wisdom. Okay. I'll drop it tonight if you promise to go tomorrow night. How about I just be the designated driver? <laughs> okay. Tomorrow, you drive. Tonight, I get to drive. What? Right on time. I do love a punctual man. Doesn't take much to win your affection. Hmm. If that were true, there would have been a lot more men in my life. Uh, I do consider males the weaker of the two sexes. Now, oh, why doesn't that surprise me? Maybe it's because nothing surprises me anymore. Our world's gotten tipped upside down the last couple of years. You sound like such a pessimist. You're not like one of those doomsday prophets, are you? Some days I feel like it. Well, it's night, so let it go. And as queen of this castle, I command you to relax and have fun. You do remember what that is, don't you? Oh. Let me squeeze my brain a little bit here, and maybe I can dig out a recollection of such a phenomenon. You know, I think I finally understand what draws me to you. What's that? I can't figure you out. I would just like to put you on the end of a pin and just study you with a magnifying glass, microscope, just figure out what it is that makes you tick. That sounds like it might hurt. Besides, you're not going to get the answers you're looking for. And why's that? Because what makes me tick is not visible even with an electron microscope. Mm, let me guess. God. You didn't even need the microscope or the pen. Well, good, because I don't know where my butterfly net or my pins are. Would you like something to eat? Oh, absolutely. Hmm, smells delicious. Not divine? Oh, no. I uh, reserve that word for more appropriate situations. Uh, God, again. You know, you remind me of my family's old stereo. Always get stuck. We'd have to, like, kick it. <laughs> Am I going to need to kick it to get you out of your groove? I don't think a little kick's going to do the trick. Nuclear explosion might. Well, then I'm slightly underarmed. <laughs> How about you sit down? I'll bring out the food. Can I help? No, just sit down right over there. Okay. Wait. You going to pull my chair out for me, too? Uh, no. Here we go. <laughs> Now, I do hope you like Whoa, red I wine. I'm, I was planning on not reclining at all. Um, of course, the Eagle Scout does not taint his body with intoxicating spirits. You know, I never have. I always found it interesting that when food ferments, they throw it away. But with beverages, they put them on a pedestal after fermentation. <laughs> Funny. So, are you now going to do that ritual where you tell God what a good father he is for showering you with manna from heaven? Oh, I'd like to. Oh, good. Um, well, you do that, and then I'll start drinking my wine and yours. Close your eyes. I want to lay a surprise on you. Mmm. Okay. Wait, what are you doing? I'm hot. Do you want me to look at you while we're talking? Well, of course. Then you have to cover up your charms. I may be a scout, but a saint, but I want to be, so an ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure.
Now tonight we're going to have a little bit of a drinking contest. Yeah, come on. Only $20 to get in. Winner walks away with the whole pot. Yeah. If he or she can still walk. All right, anybody takers? Come on. Anyone? Oh, yeah. Can you give me Anybody a pink For what? Shut up, the big mouth. Just let him do his peacock impression. Who, who cares? Alright. Anybody else? Alright. Alright. Anybody else? Well, thank you so much. That was really delectable. Well, I am glad you enjoyed it. Well, look at that. We didn't even argue during dinner. Yeah, the topic of evolution never came up either. So, is it just that I need to say to you that uh, Charles Darwin is a flim-flam man or a charlatan and then you'd like me? I really don't think that Darwin was a con man. He truly believed what he wrote. I think the devil's the real con man here. You know, doesn't it ever bother you that some of your best students, because they reject the evolution, are precluded from the graduate programs in science? Well, they obviously reject knowledge, and so they shouldn't be given advanced degrees. Do you know that there are people who would like to see those degrees stripped after the fact from anyone who embraces creationism? Yeah, I know. So if student A knows all the answers, mm -hmm. but they reject evolution, you consider them an inferior student to this academically challenged dude who embraces Darwin's tree of life as he drew it, even though evolutionists dispute that one. Absolutely. Have you ever considered that maybe there really is a heaven and a hell, and that people like you are condemning young people to an eternal punishment because of your teaching? Have you ever considered just grabbing me and having some fun? I think you've had a little bit too much of that fermented grape juice. Mm, no, no, actually I have had just the right amount. You see, I had to handicap myself, give you a fighting chance, just now in case we engaged in any heavy discussion. Uh, I'm, a, I'm afraid I'd take advantage of you. No. In, intellectually, that is. Well, you don't need to be afraid, honey. You can take advantage of me any way you want. You're not acting like a professor right now. Mm, I am off duty. Well, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, I'm never off duty, so... Please, let's get back to the science. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Hypothetical situation here. Suppose you and I are mathematicians. And we don't like the number four, so we just remove it from the numbering system, okay? You with me? Mm -hmm. So then we go around and we ask people, what does two plus two equal? What's going to be their answer? Well, if you've taken out the number four, then they could never give you the right answer. Exactly. That's what scientists do when they remove God from the equation, and mm -hmm. then they try to explain the intricacies of the world. They take away the correct answer so no one can answer it right. <laughs> and then they make up their own answers, and they force it down our throats. Well, tell me this. If God is the correct answer, then why don't you get your magnifying glass, your microscope, and you show me God. I could be real cute here and say something like, you know, God, like natural selection, can't be seen. Only the effects of God, but it's not true. People have seen Jesus. There's reports coming, especially among the Jews and the Muslims, that Jesus is appearing to them. Well, I wonder what kind of wine they're drinking. <laughs> okay, so if you won't take advantage of me, then I am going to take advantage of you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I hate to eat and run, but I'm out of here. Thanks what? a lot. For dinner, that is. What? what? <sighs> that self-righteous, inflated, pompous SOB!